everyone, it's MK. Welcome back to MK Quilts. So today we are embarking on a new product, a new adventure, and a new loading video. So behind me, I have my Simply 16 on the little foot frame with the brand new little buddy system attached. So what I'm gonna do for you today is I'm gonna show you a couple, at least two, different options for loading this frame. If you have been following me for a while, you know that I have a really long loading video for my other larger machine and frames. This is gonna be very similar to that. Obviously, it's a much smaller frame, but I'm gonna show you basically our standard, let's use some pins method, and then I'm gonna show you how I load my quilts using zippers and the leader grips. So these are explained in the other video, but I use a combination of the leader grips with some zippers. So let's start out the good old fashioned way, the way that most of us were taught when we got our first machines. Let me show you how I would approach it using pins. All right, so the first thing is that the new little buddy system comes with leaders. So what you're gonna wanna do if you're a traditional pinner is you're gonna wanna take the leader and you're gonna wanna find the center part of the leader and put a little mark there. Now, don't get confused right now if you are seeing that this one has had a zipper attached to it. Just kind of overlook that for now. We'll come back and talk about that in a minute. Just take your leader off of the frame, find the middle, put a mark, find the middle on the back one. Okay, so you've got center front and center back. Now let's talk a little bit about how the leaders are actually attached to the frame. So down here on the bottom bar, what you want to do is attach your leader so that it is cascading toward the back of the machine. Okay, so I have the uh, Velcro is on the bar and the leader is cascading towards the back. On the back bar, I have the leader attached and again, in the back, it is cascading towards the back. Sorry about my gnarly thread on there. Okay, so both of the leaders attached with the Velcro cascading toward the back. All right, let's go ahead and start in the front. Now, one of the nice things, you guys, about this frame is that it's very compact. So you can just pretty much do all of your loading from the front. I'm gonna give you an option where if you want to, you can walk around the back if it's easier for you to do that. But for the most part, you can load the entire thing right here from the front. So what I would do if I was you is take your bottom leader just go ahead and kind of pull it up here and rest it over the top of the bar right there. You're gonna take your backing. Now what we're loading today is a very small little baby quilt, but just in loading in general, you guys, I would try to load on your salvages whenever possible. Those are gonna be your straightest edge. If that's not possible, what you're gonna wanna do is clean up your other edges, right? So that you have two completely straight across edges to load on the leaders. All right, today we're gonna go ahead and use the selvage edge. All I'm gonna do is fold my backing in half. I'm gonna find the center part. I'm gonna go ahead and put a pin right in the center. I'm gonna go on the other edge. Again, I'm gonna find the center. And I'm gonna match up that center with the center that we've marked right here on the leader. Okay, so we want wrong side up, right side of the backing down. Just gonna go ahead and line up the mark on your leader right there with the pin on the quilt. And then what I like to do is I like to pin out in one direction. I usually go to the left first and then I go to the right. So we'll have Ellen just kind of come in a little closer. You can watch how I pin. We'll probably put it on fast forward and then we'll move around to the back.
right, once we've got it pinned along the bottom edge, what I would do is probably just straighten out the backing a little bit here. If you have a very long backing and it's neat, if you need to, just walk around the back and go ahead and get the backing nice and even over that back bar. All right, down here at the end of the frame, I do want you to notice that we have installed an extra hand wheel onto this bar. That is not included with the little buddy system. You get one hand wheel, which is meant to be attached on the back bar. But I find it extremely useful to have that extra hand wheel up front. Of course, we always have those in stock at MK Quilts. You can head on over to the website if you don't have that. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is basically just go ahead and using the hand wheel, I'm gonna go ahead and wind up my backing. Now all I'm doing as I'm watching it come over the bars is I'm just making sure that it's nice and straight and nice and even as it comes across the bar. Okay, I've just picked up one of my new favorite tools in my studio. I rarely press my backings. And actually I tell my clients, you know, don't spend a load of time pressing. Go ahead and give it a good press, but don't worry if it gets a little wrinkled because I'm gonna use a misting bottle and a little bit of water or unscented best press is what I use. And I'm just gonna lightly give my backing a little mist with the misting bottle and then just continue to roll, okay? Every so often, if you see that there's a few wrinkles, you're just gonna grab your misting bottle and give it a little mist. Now, I don't have any of these in stock right now, but keep watching the website. They may show up again on mkquilts.com, okay? All right, once your backing is getting up to where the edge is on the back bar, I would want you to stop before it falls over because now we need to match up that center part of the backing with the center of the leader. So I'm gonna have Ellen come in a little bit closer and I'll show you how I do that. Okay, so once again, with the back leader, you want that cascading towards the back and then you want the leader to come underneath of this bar. Okay, so we're just gonna get pull it out. We can see our centering mark right there and all we're gonna do is go ahead and match that up with the center of our backing. We're gonna pin it on. Okay, we don't need to let you watch us do all of this pinning again. It's gonna be the same that we did up front. I'm just gonna go ahead and pin this on in that direction, and then I'm gonna go ahead and pin it in the other. All right, so there we go. I did the exact same thing. Started in the center, pinned out to the left, and then pinned out to the right. Now we're just gonna finish our rolling, engage our ratchet, and just go ahead and roll this back up. Now you guys, one of the things that I have found over years of doing loading is that sometimes, even though you take great care in loading your backing, sometimes you get a little bit of a, a kind of a drooping on one end or the other. So what I have found works the best is to just go ahead and roll your backing all the way onto the back bar and then immediately just turn back around and roll it back onto the front bar. And just by doing that back and forth motion, usually it gets that backing nice and straight across. Okay, the last thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my edge of my, ba my backing and I'm gonna roll it until it's just underneath of that bar. That way when I go to put my batting up there and do my plumb line, none of my pins are gonna be in the way. Okay, I want Ellen to come on over here. With this, this extra handrail down here, as you're turning it in the frontward position, it can have a tendency to come out of the little, uh, the little attachment right here. So if you just kind of keep your hand up here against the bar as you're rolling, that will keep the bar from kind of popping out the front of the apparatus there, okay? All right, that's just a little tip that I have found as I've been working with the frame. All right, once we get that backing 
completely nice and straight, nice and flat along the top edge. We're ready to lay down our batting. Okay, so we're up to the batting stage, but I want to go back really quickly and mention something that I forgot at the beginning of the video. So what I like to do when I'm on my bigger frames is get my machine off to one side and let it hang out while I'm loading the quilt. Well, this is kind of a compact frame, but I do like to do the same thing. Now, if, you're, if your table is really well balanced, the machine should pretty much stay over there. But if you want, the little foot frame does come with these little uh, channel locks that little have little rubber ends on them. And basically all I did, you guys, was take these little channel locks and wrap them around the wheels. I had one down on the bottom of, of the frame here at the bottom wheel on the carriage, and then I have another one over there wrapped around that wheel. And that just makes it so, so that the machine just kind of stays put where it needs to stay. And while you're doing your initial loading, it stays put. And now we're ready to lay down the batting. Okay, so with the rest of the loading process on the little foot frame, you're going to be doing a full float on your batting and your quilt. Okay, so we've got the backing all nice and loaded with the leaders, but the rest of it, you're just gonna need to get that nicely aligned, and then you're just gonna let the rest flow down or float down the front of the frame. All right, so we have a little piece of batting here. Ellen is actually gonna be working on this cute as can be little baby quilt that she designed and pieced for some of my owners that are coming in for a private lesson. So we're like, well, you know what? Let's do the loading video and then get your quilt loaded so that Ellen can go to town. Okay, we've got the batting up here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take off one of the channel locks that I had on the bottom. And then what we'll do is we'll adjust the machine where we want it. And you have a couple of options here, you guys. If you want, you can just go ahead, push the machine as far back as it will go, and just let the machine ride along the back rail and stitch across so that you have a nice straight line. Or you can come at any point between your rails, decide where you want your machine, and then go ahead with the channel lock and put it around the wheel so that the machine will not move front to back it will only move side to side. All right, we have enough backing here and we have it loaded so that that pins, remember we talked about the pins? Those are underneath the rail. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run the machine as I hold the machine against the back bar and I'm just gonna go ahead and stitch a line completely straight across. All right, time to get the quilt on top. And then what we're gonna do after I show you this pinning process with the quilt, I'm gonna kind of back up the presses. I'm gonna take all of this off and I'm gonna show you option number two for loading with the zippers and the grips. All right, one more tool that I wanna show you are these side grips. Now I've showed you these before. I have a YouTube video about it. I use these on my other machines but they're also a very handy tool to use here on the little foot frame. Basically, you guys, it's just a dowel with a little grip on the top. The ribbon comes with it, and then this is a very technical piece of equipment you can get at your local office store. Basically, you're just gonna go ahead and put the grip and the dowel on the side of your fabric, and then if you have any spare uh, of your clamps or Velcro or even cording of some sort, or even you could use uh, selvages over here. Basically, you're just gonna attach the, the selvage or your cording to the side of the frame. That's just a magnetic bar that I got at Harbor Freight. And then all I'm doing with the little binder clip is just clipping that so that you have a nice even tension to the side of the quilt. Now this is assuming that you have enough uh, space on the side for this, but um, I really love these. These are my favorite things to use for side grips. I put the quilt up here using the plumb line that we sewed across the top. 
Now what I like to do when I baste my quilts is I like to put a few pins strategically located on the top of the quilt just so that when I baste along the edges that the quilt doesn't kind of walk along the top of edge of the batting with me. Okay, so I just put a few pins along there. The next step that I would be doing would be the basting. Now I'm not going to baste it right now because I want to show you option number two for loading which is the zipper option. So we're going to unload this whole thing and I'm going to meet you right back here where we can talk about zippers, no pins. Okay, option number two, zippers. So I love using zippers in my studio because it makes the loading process go very quickly for me. It also makes it so that I don't have to use pins and I can just step away from the frame, sit down at my sewing machine and do the loading process bring it right over to the frame, zip it on, and roll it up, okay? So what you get when you buy zippers from me is you get enough of these fabric zipper tabs to fit the front bar and the back bar, and then you get one extra so that if you have a quilt loaded and you've got another one coming up in line, you can have this one on the frame and you can get your next backing pre-attached to at least an extra liter so that when this quilt is done, you can come right in with the next quilt, zip this one off, zip the next one right on, okay? So I'm gonna have Ellen come in a little closer. Let me get this zipped back onto the liter. Now, as I'm zipping this on, you guys, I wanna let you know that anybody who buys zippers from me gets a video that talks you through how you attach the pull part of the zipper to your leader. So we sew the tab part of the zipper onto the fabric and we send that to you with the pull part of the zipper. Now the pull part of the zipper I can't do for you because I don't have your leader. So I send you a video shows you exactly how to attach the zipper pull to your leader. So don't be afraid, it's really quite easy. All right, so what you would do very similar to what we already talked about. If I was you, I would once again put the mark, the center mark on my fabric tab that you get from MK that already has the zipper attached. I would put a mark there and I would put a mark here, just exactly like we talked about before. But this time what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna show you this standing at the frame and then we'll talk about how you would think it through if you weren't at the frame. Basically, you're gonna take your backing, you're gonna find the center mark, just like we did before. You're gonna take this leader with your center mark, and you're just gonna go ahead and put one little pin in it right there. That's just to hold your spot. Then you're gonna take the other edge, and again, you're gonna go ahead and find your center spot. You're gonna grab the back leader, And again, you're gonna find that center spot, okay? Now, Ellen, if you come in just a little closer so that you can see that I'm using the bottom side of this leader and I'm matching it to the right side of my quilt backing. Now, with using the zippers, the only thing that you have to be aware of is that you need to get the backing attached to the zipper so that your backing is not on upside down, okay? So just, again, review this video and I think it will make sense to you. Okay, so now that we basically have that center marked, all we're gonna do is we're gonna take this zipper and we're gonna take this zipper and we're gonna take it over to our domestic sewing machine and we're just gonna sew these ends onto the actual fabric tab. So we don't have to stand here and do any pins. We just go over to the sewing machine, use a basting stitch on your domestic, and sew these on. All right, you guys, because these leaders are pretty short, basically you found the center spot of your leader, and you can just walk your fingers out to the edge. And then with the long basting stitch on your domestic, you're just going to go ahead and sew this right on to the leader. Okay, right now I have a quarter inch foot on my sewing machine, but it really doesn't matter as long as you keep the edge of your zipper tab 
even with the edge of your fabric, you're going to be fine. So whatever foot you want to use, it's, it's really fine. You don't necessarily need to have a quarter inch. Now that we have that done, we're going to take these back over to the frame and just zip them on. All right, here we are back at the frame. We've only used two little pins to help us keep things together, but no other pins that are going to draw blood, catch on our clothing, any of that. It's just a lot, lot faster. I love the zipper so much. Okay, once you get back over to the frame, there's just one little thing that you have to be very careful about. You have to be careful that you know which was the bottom edge and which was the top edge. So on my zippers, what I did was put a little X. And that helped me to know that that was the one that was attached to my front bar. It can also be a very useful indicator for you to know which side of the fabric that you sew the zipper tab to. That's very important, otherwise you're gonna get it upside down like we mentioned before, okay? So mark your leaders up any way that makes sense in your head, in your studio, just so that you know you've got the right bar attached to the right bar and that you're attaching the fabric to the right side of the zipper tab. Just do a little bit of experimenting. You will figure it out and then you can just take a marker and mark up your tabs, okay? All right, so we're gonna come on over here. Once we have this attached to our zipper tab, you're just gonna kind of throw that over the back. Go ahead and come up here. You're gonna bring this tab up, the zipper leader up over the bar because that's the way that it needs to go on. You're gonna take your zipper that you've now attached to your backing and you're just gonna reach through and pull it and zip it on. Don't be concerned that your zipper is upside down. Don't be concerned about that at all, all right? If you need to, come around to the back and just get your backing nice and straightened out back here and you can just let it fall over the bar while you do your winding. Okay, the winding portion of this, you guys, gonna be very similar to what we did before. Get out your little spritzing bottle and do the spritzing. Just stand here, make sure that your fabric gets on here really nice and even and then once the fabric is just about to fall over the bar you're going to want to run to the back and what you're going to do is you're going to put this piece of fabric under this bar right that's where that needs to go and then you're in the back all you have to do is take the other end put it in the zipper that's attached here on the back and just go ahead and zip this on now, one of the things, you guys, that you also want to keep in mind is that we did mark the, the leader, right, with a centering mark here and a centering mark there. If your leader gets a little bit off or if the spots where you marked that get a little bit off, what you can do is this. I'm going to come around to the side and I'm going to go ahead and wind this up and see if my backing looks like it's on straight. If it's not, it's really not a big deal. All you have to do is come around the back, unwind the bar, take your leader off of the, off of the Velcro, and just adjust it whichever way. Because there is a slight chance that even though you pinned it, even though you marked it, when you take it to your sewing machine, it might get just a little bit off. No problem. The Velcro makes it very easy to just take it off, adjust it one way or the other so that it's going on straight, and then just reattach the Velcro and you're golden. Now, there's option number three. Let me come back around and talk to you about that. All right, the last option I'm going to talk to you about is even faster than the zippers. So the way that I load on my big frames is I use the zipper in the front, but I use the leader grips in the back, okay? Now, 
on your zippers that you receive from MK Quilts, one of your zipper tabs will have a casing sewn into it. The casing is big enough for the dowels to go into the casing. So that's the next option I'm gonna show you around the back of the machine, but let's just finish up with what we were doing here. Basically, you guys, from here out, it's the same as I showed you in option number one. You're basically gonna get this rolled up. You're gonna go ahead, if you need to, roll all the way to the back, roll all the way to the front, get that nice and smoothed out. You're gonna come up to the front, you're gonna lay your batting down. You're gonna do your plumb line. All of that is exactly the same. You're gonna get your quilt up there. You're gonna pin it, you're gonna baste it, okay? So just the only difference there is the zippers, no pinning. All right, we're gonna move on. I'm gonna show you really quickly how to do the grips in the back. All right, so we're around the back and I wanted to talk to you really quickly about the dowels themselves before we get started. So these dowels come in a set from me. Again, all of this is on my website, you guys. But what the dowels come in is predetermined sizes from the manufacturer. Now what I've done here in my studio is just taken some of the long ones, and if they're too long, I've just taken like a yard clipper, a really strong one, and just basically chopped them down to size. Okay, the second thing with using the grips here on the little foot frame is you're dealing with a much shorter span than what I normally do on my big frames. So if you're going to use the leader grip and dowel option, what I would do is use it on a small, a very small quilt here on the frame. Nothing bigger with your backing than fits between the carriage and the end of your frame, okay? So you're losing just a little bit of space using the grips, but you're gaining speed in the loading process. So I think it's one of the reasons why it's very beneficial to go ahead and add the zippers onto your leaders because then you have a lot of options. So back here in the back, what I have done is taken a combination of dowels. I've used a couple of short ones that I had chopped off and I just put them into the casing here on the back, okay? So the dowels fit the casing from here up to the carriage. Okay, the next part of the video, you guys, is again, pretty much the same that we've already talked about. What I had done on the bottom edge here was sewn the backing to the zipper tab, okay? We talked about that before. Just went ahead and wound up the backing. Now the slight difference with the grips is just how far you roll the backing. All right, so let me just go ahead and whip this over here. We'll just kind of pretend that we started from the beginning. And again, just kind of pretend you've got that spritzer bottle, all of that exactly the same. All right, this time when you're rolling up your backing, what you're gonna do is you're gonna stand over here on the side and you're gonna watch the backing until it just about reaches the top of your bar, okay? So whether you got a lot of backing or whether you got a short backing, you're just gonna wind until the backing is just about to fall over the bar, all right? Now here's one thing that I always forget on my big frames. After you're done winding, go ahead and lift up your ratchet because we're gonna be doing something from the back that if you forget to lift your ratchet, well, then you gotta come around the front again and release your ratchet. Okay, so make sure your ratchet is up. We're coming around to the back side now. Now, one very important note here. Our backing is still coming up and over the bar. Now, ultimately, this backing needs to be underneath of the tensioner bar. But let's not worry about that right now. I'm gonna show you the beauty of the zippers and how we get it back into the proper placement. What this allows you to do, having it come over the bar, is keep your backing nice and straight. Coming straight off of that bar, up and over, everything is nice and straight and you can see it. Okay, for this next part, I'm gonna have Ellen come around to the back so that I can show you this up close and personal. Okay, so around here in the back, now what we have is our grips, okay? The grips come with the dowels, so everything you need comes with the leader grip set. 
But again, what I have done is taken a combination of the grips, and they come in long ones, they come in short ones, but these as well are very, very easy to just go ahead and clip them down if you need to. So what you really want is a combination of these grips that basically match the combination of dowels that you have in your casing, okay? Just about the, the length of the side of the frame here, no further than your carriage. That's really important for what I'm about to show you. So the next thing we're gonna do is use our table as a tool. And that's gonna make it so that it's much sturdier for us to just go ahead and press down on these grips. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead, and we're gonna take our casing that has the dowels in it, we're gonna grab it right along with our fabric, and we're gonna go ahead and pull this completely straight out from the front. And then we're gonna go ahead and lay it down on our table. If our fabric got a little messed up, just go ahead up here, and straighten it out a little bit, straighten it out, and make sure that you can see on the bottom here on the table that your fabric has covered up the dowels that are in the casing. All right, time for the grips. All we're gonna do, and Ellen, if you need to come in closer for this, is I am using the palm of my hand, and I am just gently pressing this grip on to the dowel that is inside of the casing. So do you see as I get over here towards my carriage that if I had dowel still all the way up here in the casing, it would be hard for me to use the table to, to press down on because the carriage is in the way. So that's one of the things I, I really strongly highly, highly recommend that you only use a backing that's gonna fit here on the back no further than your carriage. All right, so here we are. We've got the grips on the, on the dowels, but now again, you guys, our fabric is on the wrong side of the tensioner bar. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna reach underneath. We've got a zipper installed on this leader. We're gonna unzip the, the zipper. We're just gonna grab this fabric that is now attached. We're just gonna go ahead and lay it down under the bar. We're gonna grab it and we're gonna zip it back up. I mean, how easy is that? Okay, and here we go. Again, you guys remember, the installation video for the zippers is very, very simple to follow, and anybody who buys the zipper grip combination from me will get that other video. All right, the last thing I do is I just kind of stand back here and make sure that my leader, again, is nice and flat and straightened out, and now I'm gonna go back and talk to you about the winding. All right, the last thing to do is basically just wind this up so that it's nice and even and flat. Now again, here is that step that is the exact same thing as in the other part of the video. If you get to this point and your backing is drooping a little bit, then all you're gonna do is wind it all the way onto this bar, undo the ratchet, redo the ratchet up front, hold your hand in front of this bar down here, especially if you're using the hand wheel, and you're just gonna go ahead and wind this back up. And just that motion from back and forth usually will get the backing nice and evened out. No drooping on either side. Now one very, very last important tip about the leader grips is they do eat up some of the backing, okay? So if you are using a backing that's kind of tight top to bottom. What I mean about that is it's not very much larger than your quilt top, then probably the leader grips are not gonna be the option for you on that quilt. Because as you press that down, it takes up a good inch or inch and a half of that backing. And if you're tight already, you don't want the leader grips getting in the way and eating up even more of that backing. The other thing to remember is that you can either, and Ellen, why don't you come up a little bit closer? You can either stop with the leader grips on the back side of your tensioner bar, or you can wind them far enough so that they come underneath of the tensioner bar and end up in front of it. Either way is fine. You just need to make sure that one, they're not under the tensioner bar that's gonna get in, in the way of your machine as you quilt. And the second thing is, 
If you end up with them in front of your tensioner bar, then obviously you're just gonna wanna make sure that you don't run into them or hit them with your machine. All right, so there you have it. That is the way that I load on my little foot frame here in the studio. Let's just review really quickly. Of course, the little buddy system comes with the leaders. You don't have to do anything with them. Just put them on, use your trusty old pins, and pin your backing both on the front leader and on the back leader. You can take it one step further and get the zippers. We will custom make them for you to the exact size of the leaders that come with the Little Buddy system. We will make them for you and send them to you. We will send you a video that shows you how to put the zipper pull onto your leader in your studio. And then you can either pin or I would actually sew my backing right onto those zipper tabs. Now, the one thing to remember with the zipper tabs get your backing attached to them in the correct way. You wanna have obviously right side down, wrong side up, and it really does matter which way you sew them onto the zipper tabs. But once you get that into your head, no problem. It makes the loading go very, very fast. You don't have to stand here at the machine. You just take it over to your sewing machine, whip stitch them on there just with a long basting stitch, come back over here, zip them on, wind it up, and you're done. Option number three is probably my favorite way. It's a combination of using the zippers with the grips to make it go very, very fast. What I do here in MK Quilts is I sew the front part on, right? The bottom of my backing. I sew that part on to the front leader. In the back, I use the grips. I use that unzip, whip it under the bar, zip it back up, and again, very, very quickly, you have got your backing loaded, you haven't had to use any pins, and you haven't really had to stand at the machine all that long to get this accomplished. You guys, I hope that this was helpful for you. You know, as with anything that I teach you, sometimes you're gonna grab onto it and take it. Sometimes you'll be like, oh, maybe I wanna just alter that a little bit. But I hope that you can see how wonderful this little buddy system is now with the leaders on there, and you pick which way is easiest for you to load. All right, you guys, of course, if you have any questions about any of this, please reach out to us. We will drop all of the contact information, all of the links to purchase the products here at the end of the video. And as always, from my studio to yours, happy quilting. Bye-bye.